Hey everybody, welcome to the MMA Heat Podcast. I'm Karen Bryant. And I'm Pete Cummings. Uh, I'm getting over a cold. I, uh, you can still hear it a little bit, but uh, but I'm here, I'm, I'm powering through. So we're, so we're starting off the show with an excuse. Yeah, I'm letting on. people know Early that uh, if my voice sounds a little bit funky, that's why. But the quality of the podcast, Pete, will not suffer. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm, uh, I've had a head injury when I was a small child. <laughs> so, is that, is that yeah. what explains it all? So there's my excuse. Is there, so, okay, yeah, yeah. well, you know, okay. So uh, obviously, folks, we're going to be talking a lot about UFC 188, which saw uh, Fabricio Verdum become the new undisputed heavyweight champion Amazing. of the world. What a performance. So we're going to spend a couple of rounds on that because that deserves it. We're also going to talk about the uh, Alvarez uh, Melendez fight, the whole Kelvin Gastelum situation there <laughs> with the weight, uh, and uh, and Dana's uh, thoughts on that. And Pete uh, and High Five, what are we doing? Little praiser pummel for High praiser Five. Pummel old high school, five. yeah, we're Bring going old back. school, old school. Praiser pummel is fun because uh, in that you know we talk about stuff, but that one uh, in our comments section for sure we like you guys to uh, pipe in on your thoughts as well and praiser pummel. One thing I do want to praise Pete. It's the fact that today, you know, we didn't have an alarm clock uh, go off this morning. It's the first Monday where the children are not in school. Man, that felt good. So that's because you're a good parent. Me, yeah. I had my kids in camp. We actually had to get up. <laughs> yeah, we had actually had to get up a little bit earlier. I had to <gasps> drop them off at camp at 7:45. Oh my goodness! Are you kidding me? Uh, my kids are institutionalized. Oh my God, <laughs> my kid is loved. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. She's gonna go to camp next week. I'm kidding. Yes. We're gonna do. We're doing some family stuff. Love week. weekends a child, Karen. We're gonna. <laughs> We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna do some family stuff this weekend. But she's gonna go. She's gonna do some camp next start next week and stuff like that. It's good. But I just, it was lovely to just sleep in. Right. That felt right. good. Well, I'm it. psyched with no homework at night. Yes, That's, you were struggling with that, weren't you? Nah, well, <laughs> no, I wasn't actually struggling to understand it. I, Karen, I'm pretty good at third grade math. I was struggling because I actually suck as a teacher. Oh. Apparently, belittlement and right. annoyance are not two good they're teaching not, traits. Not great teaching How can you not get this? <laughs> 12 divided by 3 equals 1 times 3 equals 12. No, not plus. <laughs> Yeah, I was. Uh, uh, I was not. I was. I'm. A, I'm a very bad teacher. All right, you're also a bad timekeeper because now we're half a, a minute into round oh one. My God. It's okay, folks. Take so, we want to talk, of course, about uh, Cain Velasquez versus Fabricio Verdum. So, it had been a very long time since Cain had fought, and uh, six hundred and two days, something like that. So. You know, they obviously train very hard up at AKA, the new light heavyweight champion, da uh, Daniel Cormier is there, Luke Rockhold, Khabib Nurmagomedov when he is healthy is there. It's a, it's a great gym. And, you know, so the ring rust factor may not be uh, as strong of an issue for guys from AKA as I feel like it could be from other gyms. I feel right. like that's a, a very solid gym. Kane did not go down to Mexico City uh, in too much in advance for the high altitude. Fabrizio Verdum, on the other hand, anywhere from 35 to 45 days, depending on what part of the broadcast you're listening to. I actually also read six weeks. Okay. Apparently, apparently, but and he actually went to an altitude higher than Mexico yeah, City. A long time. So Fabrizio, uh, being the interim champ, really took uh, took the initiative and and perhaps took this more seriously. Being the underdog, being the guy that everybody wagged their tongues at and said, "You're not a real champ. You're a paper right, champ. Right, you're right. gonna get your butt handed to you. Enjoy that. Enjoy that belt for a few months uh, from November till now." Uh, boy, did he prove everybody wrong. Now, that was an amazing fight. I'm psyched just to have the word I I interim gone. It, gone. You know, it was so tight, tiring to go. Champion. Yes, yes, exactly. I'm hoping to get interim co-host. Uh, interim co-host. Oh, yeah. really? Yes. When Michael Bisping well, finally tells you, yes. no, Karen, I'm not doing the podcast. We're, we're with you. And I am officially your co-host. Bisping would be good, though. Oh, you he's would a, dump me a in a second. You he's would a dump me in a second. You'd be like, so, Pete, um, we're going a different direction. You can still write for us, but you just need to be over there. <laughs> Uh, no, so let's take a look at this. So the submission came uh, in the third round at two minutes and 13 seconds of round three, winner by submission, Fabrizio Verdum. Um, actually, uh, the, the, the punch count was pretty high. You know, we know that, that Kane usually throws a lot of volume, and I actually got very nervous in the first round for Fabrizio taking that many punches. Right. I thought that was a bad idea, because most people, as we saw what happened to Junior Dos Santos, like, those things add up, and you get, you, 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 you start using, losing years off your life, uh, which started to really worry me. Um, 
But uh, Cain Velasquez landed 117 of 201 punches, so that's a 59%. Uh, Fabricio, 101 of 180, so 57%. So punch count, very, very similar for these guys. Significant strikes, so Fabricio landed 96 of 174 for 56%. Cain uh, Velasquez, 88 of 169 for 53%. Cain did get the takedowns, four takedowns to only one for Fabricio, but of course, the thing is Fabricio's like, all right, cool, let's play right, in my sandbox. Right, right, right. Not so worried about a takedown. No, l listen, I thought Fabricio beat him at his game. Yeah. Um, and then in between the second and the third round, when Kane's corner's gone, you know, take him to the mat. Right. It was like it was like an animal who lives in a hole and comes up out of his hole and like fights out of his hole and does really well and then goes back in and the other animals <laughs> short-sighted enough to follow him down <laughs> right into in the, the hole. hole. Yeah. I mean, so l listen, it was it was really impressive. I mean, he that second round, I mean, his striking was so accurate. I mean, yeah, and here's the thing, you know, for Fabricio, um, we were actually uh, there. I mean, he was there uh, when Fabricio fought Fedor Emelianenko. And I remember being there. It was up in uh, San Jose, and I'm sitting there watching, and that only took, you know, uh, seconds, like right. uh, you know, a minute and change or whatever, or 49 seconds or something. And, like, the, the goosebumps started to come, and it was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, he's doing this. He's doing this. This is insane. And if you look on our um, – my YouTube channel, uh, YouTube forward slash Karen Bryant, there's some great footage we have from backstage after Fabrizio beat Fedor and the whole team's dancing and we have this interview and it's an amazing thing. Uh, so I had posted before the fights on Saturday, is there a waft of shock the world in the air again tonight? You know, yes or yeah, no? And I was yeah. kind of like, I don't know. I kind of... I don't know. So, uh, you know, I have to say for Fabrizio, look at these pictures, obviously uh, on the audio podcast. I'm sorry that you can't see this, but these are shots of Kane getting beaten, like you said, Pete, at his own game. And that's the thing. Nobody's ever beaten Kane at a stand-up game. Do you know what I mean? So I have yeah. a feeling that they must have really been like, what is happening here? And that's why they went into the, hey, take him down. We're going to power through here. we got a lot right. to talk about here. So we're end of round one. But, but these shots show that, you know, Fabricio much more, uh, much fresher, much more attuned to that altitude and way, way more uh, 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 fit and cardio ready in a game that cardio is usually Kane's thing. Right, right. Listen, I'm not a huge fan of uh, fighting in Mexico City. Okay, uh, um, right, right. And we're going to talk about that during praise yes. or pummel. Okay, okay, pummel. Sure. I, uh, I think that's a dangerous place yeah. uh, to, 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 to put people. Um, I, listen, I... I give Kane all the credit in the world. Like he was a, such a class act during the press conference. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, he didn't make any excuses. Although there's a lot of people making excuses for, for him now about the altitude. But uh, you know, I was re like, it, it reminded me of the John Jones DC fight when John Jones had like five takedowns to DC's one. Like right. like he beat him at his own game. Yes. And here. Fabrizio really beat him at his own game. And Fabrizio now has beaten two heavyweights who people have talked about being the greatest of all time. Yes. I mean, I mean, he, this guy, and the great thing is three of the people who have beat him are in the top ten. So if he goes through those three people, yeah. or, or if we get to see that in the next year, year and a half, right? you know, he's, he's in control of his own de destiny right now. The, this is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's, it's incredible because he's beating Fedor. He's obviously beaten Kane. He also beat Big Nog. Uh, I was there for that one as well when he submitted him, and that was uh, that was crazy. Um, that's the thing, you know, people, people kind of ro don't really – Give him the respect, I think, that he's due. Uh, here you see him with Kings MMA, Rafael Cordero. Uh, here's uh, uh, Fabricio's brother, uh, Felipe. Of course, the uh, lightweight champ, Rafael Dos Anjos, also part of Kings MMA now. So Rafael Cordero has two champs uh, in his house right now. Is there a picture of the two of the guys? It's so great. Such good people. And I have to say, Pete, you know, when we were... Um, uh, watching this together, um, you had asked me about uh, Fabricio, and you know, because to, to, to you know, full disclosure, uh, I was rooting for him. Um, you know, I, I like to be neutral, and I can definitely see the um, advantages each of these fighters brought to uh, the octagon. But you know, it was one of those arguments when people asked me before, "Who do you like?" And I said, "Well, my head says Kane, but my heart says Fabricio. I've known the guy right. for a while right. now, and um, and and here he is uh, with his jujitsu coach, uh, Cobrinha Charles. And of course, um, this is when he had won the interim belt, and he brought it by the gym. Uh, he, he's a lovely guy. Fabricio is a lovely guy. Great sense of humor. Really nice guy. But 
but I, I have a um, special appreciation for him because when I first was learning Portuguese, he was very patient with me, right. and we would do interviews. He's one of the first people I had interviewed in Portuguese, he and, uh, and Vanderlei, and they were very patient with me and, and very cool and very supportive, and his, his team has always been very welcoming to us, same with Rafael Cordero. Um, and like we were talking, we'll get into this with Gil, and you were asking me why do I have a certain bond with certain fighters, and it's because we've kind of come into um, positions of, 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 of significance together. Do you know what I mean? Fabricio had already been in the UFC before, but I met him in Strike Force. And he's just doing well. He's a good guy, and I'm happy for right, him. Right. And that takes nothing away from Kane, who I think is a lovely guy and also an amazing champion. And I did retweet this because this kind of drove me crazy. Uh, Kane, you know, sends his tweet out and says, like, I'm sorry to everybody I let down. You didn't let anybody down. Like, did you see your fight? It was amazing. Like, right. you, you just happened to lose that night. You didn't let anybody down. Like, I, I hate that fighters feel that, if, if that's a genuine feeling, which I think it is for some of these guys. They're not letting anybody down. I know they want to win for their fans. I know they want to win in Mexico. But, like, dude, that was amazing. Uh, if you climb into the octagon, <laughs> you're already 20 times more impressive than I am. Totally. So, so I mean, you haven't let me down. Right. You know, it, uh, right. And I will say that uh, Fabricio, who speaks Portuguese, Spanish, and English, yeah. is very proud of that fact. Yes, because, like, when John Anik and Joe Rogan were, like, interviewing, he's like, what language do you want me to, uh, yes. do you want me to answer? Yes. And I just wanted one of those guys to go, how about Korean, Fabricio? Yeah. Can you do Korean? No, I didn't think so, okay? okay? So, well, he does call So why don't we just talk in English? Yeah, right? he calls the fights uh, for Fox Deportes, which is amazing. So the cool thing is, you know, Kane, uh, after that, had tweeted that, that, which I think is crazy. But his coach, Javier uh, Vasquez, this I thought was good. Javier, uh, head coach up there um, at AKA, along with Crazy Bob Cook, um, put this up. Credit to Verdum, he made me eat my words. His camp came prepared, and I didn't do my job. The better man won that night. Now, that's a big thing to say, uh, coming from a coach who, you know, likes to say, you know, a lot of times they were like, oh, Fabricio, you know, the stuff that he was saying about, you know, you're not, you're not Mexican, and you're going to eat your words, right, and you're right, not really right, a champ, right. and we're going to kick your butt, and we'll see come Saturday. Well, guess what? They saw, they saw a dude highly prepared. Um, who did everything he needed to do, and like you said, beat, beat Kane at his own game, which is pretty incredible. That, and listen, it was incredible to see Kane gassed. Mm -hmm. When he went for the takedown, like that was such a sloppy, tired mm -hmm. takedown, you know, with the neck sticking out there, and it was, it, it was amazing. I was just so impressed to see he got beat at his own game. Yeah. He got beat, and then he went down into the hole. He chased He chased the snake, you know, in, the mongoose chased the snake, <laughs> right. in, um, you know, into the hole. So Big mistake. It'll be interesting to see uh, who they put up for Fabrizio. You know, he did lose to Junior Dos Santos years ago. Maybe he would like that rematch. Uh, I think he would. Andre Arvlaski, Ar he's lost to Overeem. Right. I mean, he's got right. a chance. He's got a chance to make up for those, you know, to yeah. revenge those three End losses. End of round two. Well, so I, I know I have a feeling right now, I'm thinking Overeem right now probably wants no part of uh, Fabrizio right now. Um, we have, oh yeah, DC, um, uh, of course, Kane's uh, t main training partner and dear friend. Uh, this is what DC said, we all have ups and downs. The days always seem darkest right before there is sunshine. We will hear a lot of whispers and flat out criticism. We will continue to press forward. Sad thing is through the negative, something will get lost. And that's the fact that Verdum did a phenomenal job to become the champion. This is only the beginning for you, champ. He's talking to Kane. You'll be back better than ever, more fierce and more determined. I struggle to write this because I know in my heart there is not a man alive that can beat you at your best. Let's get back to work and reclaim what's yours. You are a hero to many of Kane, including me. You are always a champion. Love you, brother DC. I mean, come on. It's classy. Pretty classy guy. Pretty classy dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, AKA was really looking to have three champs. They thought Kane would keep it and they thought Luke Rockhold would take it from uh, Chris Weidman. So take a little bit longer. Well, Luke Rockhold has his work cut yes, out Yes, he does. Uh, right now, uh, uh, I'm not saying he's not up to the task, but he's got his work cut he out He sure him. does. Okay, so round three, let's talk about this co-main event. Um, Eddie Alvarez and Gilbert Melendez, you know, for a long time they were in different promotions, um, and, you know, people were saying these are two of the best guys that are in, the, you know, uh, in lightweight that aren't in the UFC, and they, you know, kind of talked about fighting each other, and it finally happened, and I honestly expected a little bit more from this. Um, I, I thought it would be more of like a, like when, when Gilbert fought Diego Sanchez, that was just like a war, and I thought that it would be more like that. I don't know if it was because strictly of the altitude 
attitude or just the fighting styles. Um, split decision win for Eddie Alvarez, which I did call, you know, after the fight was over, I thought that's how the judges would see it. Do you think that was the right thing? And I called that right after the judges announced it. You did. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You did. <laughs> been very good. Um, listen, that second round was a t t toss up. I mean, I mean, we were watching a fight, and I said, all right, Gilbert obviously round one, Eddie obviously round yeah. three. I'd have to see that second round again. So, um, and uh, and I didn't watch the second round again. I definitely had a 29-28, but I really had to see the right. second round again. Well, 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 right here, for, uh, statistics-wise, um, you know, Eddie had much more control, three minutes and 53 seconds. They're saying Gilbert had no control. Uh, but uh, Gilbert landed 49% of his strikes. Um, Eddie, 50, uh, I mean, 55% uh, uh, of his strikes, but he threw many fewer. Um, Gilbert threw 187 strikes and Eddie only threw 79. Um, Gilbert, 37 significant strikes out of 129 for 28% landed. Uh, Eddie, 31 of 64 for 48% landed. Eddie did get a few takedowns. You know, the thing that's interesting about this, and after the fight, you know, Nate Diaz, who was in uh, Gil's corner, said, you know, this is BS. Nate won the fight. You know, Eddie's got a broken orbital and he's on his way to the hospital and, and, and Gil doesn't have a scratch on him. Um, you know, when you look at overall damage, certainly Gilbert damaged him much more. Uh, after the fight, Eddie was saying he had to adjust his thing because, yeah, he had a broken orbital and a broken nose. Did, he, the, did he have a broken oh, yeah. orbital? From those elbows in the first round. So because they kept saying it was because he blew his nose. No, Why is that? He said I after. Saw now it's, now he it's, said yeah, after, yeah. yeah, broken orbital and, and broken nose. So let's take a look at the scorecard, though, to see how the judges did. Uh, do we have that scorecard for Eddie and Gil? Um, maybe, um, and and it is true. It's that second round that's that's tricky. You know, it's tough for me because Gil, uh, you know, coming off that loss to uh, Anthony Pettis, and this fight was so close. You know, and I, at the end, he just looked so tired, and it's hard because I feel like he's learned the lesson before with Benson Henderson to not, you know, take your foot off the gas. Right. I just think that that that, that Mexico City air, like you, you know, I think he's stepping on it and trying the best he could. But you know, you saw those deep breaths and you see him it's, it's like yeah where you're moving through like quicksand or something like you can tell the guys are like I really want to punch you and I can't you know um, it's tough because Gil is such a great warrior but you know good for Eddie he had a tough fight against uh, Donald Cerrone a great first round against Donald Cerrone and then uh, you know it was a little bit of a tougher fight for him okay so uh, here's the official scorecard um, uh, one gave it to uh, the first two to um, uh, well, Gil gets round one on all three cards, and uh, Eddie gets round three on all three cards. But yes, uh, one judge, only one judge, gave uh, gave Gilbert round two. Two of them gave it to Eddie, and therefore we have our difference. So it's tough. I gotta tell you though, I don't agree with Nate Diaz. I mean, yeah. Listen, it's one shot that breaks your orbital bone. Okay, yeah. so yeah, he got more damage, but he got damage from one shot. The fact that the guy fought, I know, dude. fought and won, How horrifying is that? fought and won with a broken orbital yeah. and a broken nose. Yeah. I mean, come on. I mean, I think 99% of us would have been like, oh, God, oh, God. come on. I would have, you know. Yeah, the fact that it happened in the first round and so it just kept getting hit and but battered like the whole and time. And he lost that first round. So, not, so it wasn't like he had to survive. Uh, right. It was like he had to find a way to win this yeah. fight, and yeah. he fought. Um, and you know, and he said, "Well, I got to go down to the mat now because right. I can barely see." And he found a way to win. So I don't agree with Nate Diaz, but I will say that my dream of dreams. Yes, I love hearing Nate Diaz talk. Yes. I love hearing him yes. interviewed. If I could perhaps see Nate Diaz in the first round of the Republican candidate <laughs> debates, I just want to see. I want to see, you know, Jeb Bush. Right, 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 right. Oh. <laughs> and, <laughs> You're crazy. Rick Perry, and uh, and now we're gonna hear from Nate Diaz. Well, what the fuck, man? You know we're doing all this shit. I love him, and I actually uh, had retweeted because I guess Brett Okamoto from ESPN and around three there uh, had tweeted, and I love this that I guess uh, during the Fabricio and Kane fight that Nate was up in the audience like shadow boxing and stuff, and nah, like was dead. totally into it. And and he said though he said well, I don't know if he was playing the part of Fabricio or Kane, you know, but he was like totally into it. And uh, and anybody who knows from watching you know Chuck Liddell watch a fight. Chris Weidman gets very animated when he watches right, a fight. Right. Like, yeah, I wish they had an ISO camera on me because, you know, that was so, that heavyweight fight was so great. Well, so tough luck uh, for Gil. Um, got some thinking to do. One um, last thing oh, about yes, this fight, though, is like, 
these guys had talked so much smack about yeah. each other over the years, and then you watch them at the end of the fight, and mm -hmm. it's like, again, like, this is one of the special things about mixed martial arts, is to watch these guys and their sportsmanship yeah. after, like, literally kicking the crap right. out of each other for, you know, 15 minutes. And was, didn't Eddie at one point say, I love you, baby, like, during the oh, fight? Like, they were like, like I mean, I thought they were going to get a room together um, but uh, you know but it's just like the sportsmanship is you know unbelievable right. it's, it's something that you know everyone if you have kids let them watch the very end of yeah, that just you know the very uh, end. okay well round four here I wanted to talk about uh, some of the other uh, highlights lowlights whatever you whatever you may call them um, Kelvin Gastelum you know uh, won the ultimate fighter at middleweight at 185 pounds then wanted to fight at 170 because he said you know he's too small for a middleweight uh, had some problems on the scale uh, repeatedly last time missed I think it was nine pounds something insane and uh, so they said you know what that's the last time you're fighting at 170 you got to go up to 185 this is where you need to do your work and if you can prove it you can go back down and he claims he had a really um, you know I love to swear essy weekend that time and some really essy things happened to him uh, that last time that he couldn't First of all, how do you miss it by nine pounds? Dude. You're like, man, I was, I'm, I mean, like that morning, you, you have to be like, I'm hoping to take the biggest yeah, shit mean, of my life. Because he's, a, he's a really good guy. I gotta I drop like, nine pounds. I like Kelvin a lot, but I have heard uh, even just throughout his career before, he's the kind of guy that, yeah, will stop and eat tacos on the way to the weigh-in and then will be like, oh no, what have I done? Like, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, so he just maybe hasn't always been as well prepared or, or, or this or that. So after he beat Nate Marquardt, who Nate, Nate, Nate basically got shut down. There was a while where I really thought, he, you know, he was just like, please, like, I'm done. Like, he, he, he looked like he gave, yeah. <laughs> please, That's like exactly, another submission. Yeah. Please? Because, like, he doesn't want to tap out on strikes, no. but he's absorbing so many strikes that, like, it was 50-50 whether, you know, whether the ref should have stopped that or not. I, I think 50% of the refs, you know, would have stopped that. So, yes, I agree with, like, at the end, he's like, come on, just grab it. Please, grab it. Please. Grab it so I can do it. Let me like, go out like You know, so, so I can have a graceful right. out here. Right, exactly. So, luckily. All the credit to his corner, though. Trevor Whitman, there you go. Trevor's a, a very smart guy. Uh, I saw Trevor recently. He was out with Rose Namajunas uh, in Vegas uh, the night Rose didn't get to fight. But, he, he, you know. Very smart guy, very conscientious of his fighter, letting his fighter live to, you know, fight another day if Nate's going to do that. Or, you know, at this point, the guy's been around a long time. We'll see, right. you know, what happens. But uh, very smart of him to say, you know, you're done. Uh, after after second round, so but Dana White was not really that um, complimentary to Kelvin, and it said one point said like I have like zero confidence that he's even capable of making 170, and you know Kelvin was just like I understand I'm going to try my best and do what I can, but Dana, it sounds like he's not going to give him a chance, right. to, I, or make him weigh in at 170 a few times before he actually contracts him for a fight at 170. By the way, very tough to be Dana White's wife. Yep. Honey, honey, you're 10 pounds over. Listen, it's been three years since you had the kid. I don't care. Listen, I'm sorry, but you're a little fat. You're a little fat. I told you by next I don't Saturday think, you were supposed to. I don't to think win. you can do it. What do you want me to tell you? I don't. Wow. Sorry. Just calling it as it is. Wow. Uh, you know what? Wife. I was uh, impressed with the uh, Yair Rodriguez. As were you. You were like, damn! Dude, that thing in which, like, he's kicking, and then he, um, you know, and then in midair. So, like, at one point, he's got, like, both his legs up kicking. I mean, that that's, was amazing. Uh, that's some scissor kicking <laughs> shit. <laughs> for was, for like, to quote exactly, the Diaz brothers. Exactly. You know, what is this? No, that was good stuff. Um, you know, Henry Cejudo, uh, speaking of, uh, we were talking about the, the eating the taco thing. So, Henry Cejudo beat uh, Chico Camus in the featured prelim there. Um, he actually said that, yeah, he had gotten food poisoning on Wednesday from eating a Bad taco. Yeah, Again, you're in Mexico City. I don't know if it was street meat. I don't know where he ate you the taco. You just got to bring energy bars from America, have them in a Ziploc bag. Come on. You saying that all food, is, no, all food in Mexico is not bad, Pete? I'm saying if it's prepared with the water that's coming out of their tap. No, I don't know. Of course it's not bad. Right. But, uh, but yes, so he claims he had food poisoning, so he thought he would have a better 65% of it's bad. <laughs> It's on you. Listen, you can deal listen, with all the hate listen, emails man. about that. That's on Unless you. Unless you have a Teflon line stomach. At wanna... mine, Nookie, on Twitter, <laughs> yeah, direct yeah. all of your uh, all tweets right about um, Mexican water to him. Um, no, so he, he was sort of apologetic that he didn't put on a better performance because a lot of people think he's on his way to a title right. shot with, with Demetrius Johnson. I say to beat Demetrius Johnson, you need to catch Demetrius Johnson. Uh, you know. 
Henry looks good, though. Uh, Efrain Escudero, good win for him, you know, coming back. Uh, he's been around a, a long time. Uh, for him to get that win in Mexico, he seemed pretty excited about that. Um, you know, all in all, Pete, I thought it was a good night, except for the fact that, uh, as, and I guess we'll get into this with you, you know, the altitude does slow, slow guys down. Um, it's hard to see heavyweights fight there. Although, it's, it's ironic, it's weird. They actually did keep up a pretty good pace, all things considered, for it being in Mexico City. When you think about how much slugging there really was going on, but uh, I don't know. I don't love high altitude fights for big guys. <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're gonna get we're gonna to get it in praise or pummel. But I will uh, say this too. Um, you know, I was a little uh, as were you know a lot of people uh, in the um, Angela Hill Tisha Torres fight. You know, props. Uh, to Tisha for, for getting the win, but it wasn't really that exciting. It was know? a little bit of a snooze fest. It was, and Tisha, you know, afterwards. Joe Rogan was humorously bored. <laughs> Tisha, I think Joe Rogan's like, hey, I'm, uh, I'm now doing a Rubik's Cube. No yeah, one can see me. Yeah. I'm that friggin' bored right yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> Angela was saying, you know, she, she thought she was prepared and, you know, worked the ground uh, game better and uh, just really wasn't. The thing about it, it was sort of that equivalent thing of, like, Tisha, you know, getting a certain amounts of controlling positions but then not doing anything right, with them right. and then Angela not being able to really make a move to reverse things and sweep and, and that. So uh, tough look for them because they waited a long time to get a fight. And uh, right now it's like their phone might be quiet right, for right. a little while. Um, <laughs> but hey, props to them. Round five. Praise or pummel. Praise okay, or pummel. Praise all right. Or pummel. Well, okay. last week, Rachel... Dolezal, yes. Dolezal, the president of the Spokane, Washington NAACP, mm -hmm. uh, who had pretended to be mixed race, yes. it came out that she's white. <laughs> this is her as a teenager, and this yeah. is her right now. By yeah. the way, somebody had a great tweet. They're like, well, I guess that o o orange really is the new black. <laughs> <laughs> no, nice self-tanner. Yes. What's going on with that? So. Now, she just resigned this yeah. morning. Yeah. This morning. And uh, I want to know, Karen, um, first of all, is there something that you want to admit to all of us? <laughs> I am a quarter white. I hate to tell you. I'm half quarter I'm actually, <laughs> actually, no, I have a very interesting uh, genetic background. Uh, Jamaican has Scottish in it, and my dad was half white and half black. Um, <sighs> You, my, are you praising or pummeling? My, I'm, pu I'm pummeling her for pretending to be black because she could have still done a lot of great things for uh, in the struggle for equality and race relations as a white lady. She still could have done a lot of great things. I think it's, um, you know, hey, listen, I would love it if all I had to do is straighten my hair and put on a little makeup and I could make, you know, five times more money than I make as an ethnic woman and that I could go to pool parties and not get attacked by cops. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't work the other way around. Right, right. It's not cool. You know, they talk about, you know, black people who have tried to pass, you know, for years, fair-skinned people. Um, it's it's a it's it bothers me that she felt like she needed to do that. I like the fact that she was trying to maybe quote unquote do good things, but I think she could have done them as right. a white lady. Now, do you think she would have had that job if she had been white? Uh, apparently, the NAACP claims they they that it's not a requirement that you be black to work there. No, but I think it's. I think if you show up as a white person, go like, listen, I'm looking to become uh, eventually president of so, your but chapter. But there was no other job she could have had. She needs to take a black person's job. She can't, as a white lady, can't find well, a job somewhere no. else. She got the job because she was qualified, because she worked her way up. Now, would she have gotten the job? Would she have been able to do that if she was white? I don't know. I don't work for the NAACP. Right, right, right. I, because, that's a question I, mean, I can't answer. I mean, I pretended to know. QuickBooks to get a job. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, like, maybe she never actually answered the question, totally. you know? Uh, I mean, maybe they were just like, well, you know, well, you know, uh, Rachel's a black woman, and she probably went like, no. Yeah. Well, apparently I read something that said when she went to Howard that there actually wasn't an applic on the application. It doesn't say race, so she didn't actually have to say yeah. black. But I her did. parents were like, oh, well, her, all her artwork was black and her submissions and this and that. But the best is the guy who literally from the, C the local CNN affiliate who literally on camera is like, so is this a picture of your dad? And she's like, yeah, that's my dad. And then he goes, well, so are you African-American? I don't understand the question. Well, is that your dad? Yes or no? Um, and then she just flees the interview. Well, apparently she identified as black, Native American, and white. And three, two of those are lies, right? Now, listen, my wife is three-eighths Burmese, so when we apply to colleges, my boys will be Burmese, by the way. My boys who... 
who couldn't look any whiter totally. if you put them in an ascot and a polo thing. Totally. But they will be Burmese when we apply when to the college. Time comes, that's when right. The time that's comes. Right. Um, and I love her like fake fro, like the the whole. I don't know. I just. I'm. It. It. Uh, now. Now. Now let me ask you this. Let's assume that she never said she was black, but she just never answered the question. Yeah. So I went into a Starbucks once and I was wearing a San Francisco Police Department shirt that I'd bought at a fair. And when I... And, um, oh, and no, they gave you free coffee. They gave me free coffee. I pulled out my wallet and she goes, no, no. And I go, what? what? We don't charge you guys. And, um, and there was a moment and then I went, all right, thanks. <laughs> Now, I don't want to be accused of impersonating a police officer, totally but I certainly didn't expose their truth and pay for my coffee. So uh, I don't know where that stands, but I am going to pummel it as well. Yeah. Um, I think that, uh, I mean, one, apparently she made up some hate crimes <laughs> and stuff like that. So I got to pummel it. Um, and yes, I do agree with you. Like, I'm sure she was very qualified and that's why she got promoted. Right. But. You know, I'm sorry. If uh, if there's one strike against being white in this country, then <laughs> darn it, we don't get the leadership positions at the NAACP. I think we can live with it. I think we've had a lot going our way, you know, and that's one we can give up. However, had she campaigned to change the name of the NAACP, then maybe I would have gotten behind her. But so, all right, all right. Okay, number two. Okay, uh, slide Going number two. Time. Next two rounds, people. Praise her pummel. Praise her pummel. Karen. Yes. Uh, I love when you do this. Karen, these are, these are three quotes here. 1985, it's a Haitian prostitute. Of course, you don't need a rubber. 2007, sell all your Apple stock. This iPhone thing is going to be a dud. 2015, we got to take him down. I want him down. <laughs> what do these three quotes have in common? They're all really bad ideas. They're really bad ideas. <laughs> So, Fraser Pummel, Kane's Corner, telling him between the second and the third round to take down a world champion jujitsu. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I actually need to praise it st strategically though because he was getting beaten in the stand-up badly. Like really, really, really badly. And so at this point, usually Kane is so dominant with his takedowns and his ground and pound. And he, you know, he's got a big, heavy game um, that usually he's very, very successful there. So I feel like it was the right thing to do because he wasn't getting any better on his feet and he was getting lit up. Um, maybe he could have shot with less of a turtle. <laughs> Neck approach. But I don't so know. Exhausted. I know, but I feel like li he was gonna get lit up on right, the feet. Right. So I feel like that was the best advice in a bad situation. I'm uh, gonna praise that advice. All right, I'm gonna pummel in. In my defense, I did say something when I first heard yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, so you know, it's obviously easy to pummel when we realize <laughs> that it was you know 23 seconds later it wasn't good advice. Right. But Kane still has the power to knock someone out. He does. So and and. And when you're tired, that's when the neck starts to come out. And as soon as you hit the ground, it's, I, so anyway, I got to pummel it. I understand that it's a little bit easy to pummel after the fact, but I did say something as soon as I heard it. You did. It's just, it's tricky because what's happened is while you're sitting, you know, you, they, I'm sure went into this fight. Okay. We've got to be careful with the submission game. So let's keep it on the feet. Right, you know, let's right, be really right. careful because we know what he can do on the ground submission wise, even though, you know, you have great ground and pound. So let's, but let's play it safe. And then they see, the <laughs> like what, when did, when did, when did Fabrizio turn into this guy? Like, that's the thing. I feel like they were sleeping on his game. Like, right, dude, right. didn't you see what he did to, to, to Roy Nelson? You know, didn't you see? And yeah, he was getting lit up a little bit by Mark Hunt at first and lost that first round. But it's like, you guys have to be aware of what this guy can do. And again, it, it, it's that, it's that continued underestimation, um, which is kind of strange. I don't right, quite see right, how right. you could continue to underestimate a guy who's beaten all these people and keeps getting better and who, uh, you know, uh, look, I mean, look, is he beatable? Sure. Did I want him to eat as many punches as he did? Heck no. I thought he was going to get knocked right. out with how many punches Kane was landing on his head. 
because uh, that to me seemed very, very scary. I'll, but tell, it took you, it. I'll tell you though, it's going to be enjoyable, you know, as DC said, to watch Kane oh, gosh. come back. Kane is such a beast. That's the thing. Kane is such a great fighter. Um, it just was a really long time to be off right. and to go back and fight in high altitude. I don't, not that that's an excuse. Again, I sound right. like one of those people that's saying Fabrizio didn't deserve it, but yeah. Kane is better than what he was on Saturday. But Fabrizio was phenomenal. Right. Okay. So, third praise or pummel. Going back to the high altitude. Okay. Mexico City as the location for UFC fights. Praise or pummel? I'm going to have to pummel that. Uh, just as I do with Denver for heavyweights. Maybe not for heavyweights. I will say this. Mexico City. Who is this? What is this? Oh, well. Okay. Hold on. Um, so hold, uh, hold on. We're a little early on that one. Uh, We're a little okay. early on that Don't one. know what that is. You yeah. said third slide. Uh, okay. Sorry. So, sorry. So, <laughs> Mexico City, I like as a location. Uh, everybody said the fans were really into it, and it was a great crowd. I will say yes to Mexico City for up until maybe middleweights. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And then from there down, I would say, fine, get a lighter weight what? classes and stuff like that. Because it's just, it, it, it wasn't... It's it's not as enjoyable to watch the bigger guys fight when well, they're that sluggish. Not, I mean, even Gilbert, um, that third I, round, that, well, that third round, he had nothing left. So you're saying that? Well, they're going Henry back. Henry Cejudo, like you know, well, that's, that's, I mean, you know, he had to make up some taco story, which is still came from Mexico City. Listen, um, yeah, I, they're going back. They're going to do. Where are they doing the next one? They're doing down in uh, 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 what, uh, Baja or whatever. They're, they're going to go back to Mexico, but they're going to go somewhere different. So you're just you're flying now. Well, first of all, okay, so. In the press conference afterwards, Dana White, quote, says, people think Denver, Colorado is a tough place to fight, but I think we broke the record tonight in the back for guys puking. Six guys threw up after the fights. The altitude kills you here. Yeah, no shit. You're a mile and a half above sea level. I mean, like, you want to have a fight? First of all, you want to have a fight in Mexico, you got to pay every fighter to go down there for a month and train. And train. Okay. Because... Because, listen, a guy like Fabricio can possibly afford it, but some of these other guys can't. And, listen, if you really care about the health of your fighters, you don't send them down to, you know, or send them right. up, you know, send them up to Mexico City without having them but can't they go to Denver to, or Albuquerque? You got to pay for that stuff then. I mean, li li listen, there is no, okay. The World Cup that's in oh, I'm sorry. Qatar, in was, Qatar, yes. in 2022. Yeah, in like, 2,000 degrees. <laughs> yeah, that's it's terrible. no different. It's no different. You, you want to okay, listen. rights violations going on with that. Okay. That's no, I'm just life. talking about the health of the athletes. Yes. Listen, Mexico City is, if you want to have golf, fine. <laughs> Bowling, fine. Even like a light game of badminton, fine. But you don't have, but you don't have a blood sport okay. like this in I can, Mexico I can, City. I can agree with that. I, I don't know. Like, I'll, 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 I'll pummel it along with you as long as they give uh, Mexico an alternative city. Because I do think that the fights taking sure. place in Mexico is a good idea. Sure, Tijuana, yeah. sea level. You know, come on. There's Nobody like, wants to go to TJ. <laughs> Listen. Chicklets, chicklets. I'm just saying chicklets, that chicklets, Mexico City is enough. Honeymooners, honeymooners. <laughs> chicklets, chicklets. Come here, you got Please. TJ is not. It's just not a proper location for a fight. It's a yeah. theme. It's yeah. a theme. Like, it's a theme that they should have, like, on the ultimate fighter. Like, week one, the f um, you know, they're going to fight each other in an oxygen-deprived tank. <laughs> you know? You do. A tank of a volcano. In fact, in fact, I got to say... That that would make the ultimate fight a little bit more interesting. A little more ultimate, yeah. Well, because like this season, it's like you know, like you know, week one, they're only ten miles apart. There is bad blood, right. and now we're like in week seven. It's like the blood is still bad. It is. It's but now it's really bad. Like there was just no way to go. Like you started us here, and then you went, and it's. Oh, but now that some guys have beaten this guy, they're looking for revenge. It goes. It's goes, just ah, it's extra bad blood now, and um, and the we distance is still. We know it's Wednesday night, though, by the way. And the distance is still really close to each other. So anyway, what else? I am thinking Mexico City got me thinking. Did it? That perhaps this is a good thing for the Ultimate Fighter. So anyway. Week 22, or no, sorry, week two, week two, the fighters, they fight immediately after giving blood. <laughs> right there, right there. There we go. The fighters get blood, and then you go, all right, you're done. You might feel a little wheezy. Here's an orange, ding, ding, and there's the bell. Good luck. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Lorna Doom. Yes. <laughs> to prepare for it, for Doom had his blood drawn twice a day. Right. Dana White, I think we broke the record tonight for most uh, ghostly pale white people on a fight card. 
Week three, week three. We're back in Mexico City. Not only do the fighters have to deal with the altitude, but three days prior to the fight, they have to drink the water. <laughs> yes, there we go. There we go. Oh my God, Chris Wyman just shit all over Luke Rockhold's chest. <laughs> it's in the ring. It's in the ring. That's right. Week four, week four, they actually fight in an office. That's right. That's right. Big open space filled with cubicles, everyone working, sound of typing and phones. Through one door comes Cain Velasquez. Through the other, F Fabricio Verdum. They see each other and immediately duck down and start stalking each other. F Verdum grabs a mail cart, snaps off a leg. Now he's got a weapon. Velasquez comes crashing through Dorothy Feingold's cubicle with a letter opener. Dana White afterwards, I think we broke the record tonight for guys with stapler cuts to the head. <laughs> Come on. Come on, how interesting would that be? Week three of the Ultimate Fighter, they're gonna fight in a crowded office. <laughs> I don't even know what week I'm on. I think I'm on week five. Week five, the weigh-in is conducted in a field of poison ivy. Oh, all right. That's right, that's right. So by the time they get to the fight, they're covered with boils, both eyes are shut, and they're begging guys to take their back. Come on, just take my back a little. It hit you so much. We're up against just the cage. Take my back. Each of them up against that's the cage. Just, there, there we go, you know. You know, we could have the ring girls nice. standing around oh, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, they would right. love that. They would love that. And then, uh, so anyway, week six, seven, and eight. Week six, they fight in Green Bay, Wisconsin, outdoors in January. On the frozen tundra. Practicing jujitsu on the frozen tundra of uh, Lombardi Field. Dana White, I think we broke the record tonight for most guys with a shattered hip. Week seven, an antique store. I think we broke the record tonight for most guys being hit in the head with a 1942 Singer sewing machine. <laughs> a crowded subway, week eight. I think we broke the record tonight for most lawsuits. I'm not a fan of Mexico City as a <laughs> place to fight. Not, Pete. Um, Apparently not, But you got some solid ideas here. But I think, I really think that if the ultimate fighter wants to uh, do a little bit better, they might want to hire me. Yeah. I, I got some ideas. You got ideas. Come on. Ideas. Where's that one of the, the crowded the subway? Subway? The subway's not a bad idea. I mean, come on. Come on. Kane here. Verdum enters that, and they just start walking to each other, and then, um, and then they just start throwing elbows. People are getting hit left and right. That's and dogs. I'm I'm paying for that. <laughs> I'm paying for that. I think that'd be good. Some nice ideas. Um, some some insanity going on. Do you want to write down any of those? Do you want to take it? Um, you know, should I take that in? To, you know, any of those good bosses at Fox and Fox I there? Yeah. Uh, my friend, the high old guy, has some great ideas. My friend, the interim co-host yes. I've been working with, uh, has some wonderful ideas. <laughs> Whose reign ideas. is soon coming to an end? Um, Bizbing. I have this don't number right thing. here too. I should. See. What Bizbing? Yeah. Oh, come on, man. We work well together. Yeah. We do the top talk. I think. I, and listen, Bisping, if you need an extra 14 bucks a month, this is definitely a gig that, a gig that you want to hop on. Podcast business is really lucrative, people. It's really not. Uh, it's really not. It's a sad thing. It's... <laughs> Come on, man. Don't blow it. No, man, I'm rolling For here. For love of the game uh, is why we're here. Yes. And you didn't wear the podcast shirt tonight. Is it because you wore it to the graduation on Friday at school? <laughs> we, you know, he usually has his black podcast shirt as we rolled him to the school ceremony. I said, oh, you cheating on me? You're doing a podcast without me? I, you know, I was thinking of wearing it dirty, but uh, <laughs> but instead I wore my K-Town shirt because, uh, of course, yeah. of course, I am, uh, I am half Korean. This was the other thing that I was uh, treated to the other night watching the fights at my house. Uh, Saturday night, right? Uh... Beer in hand, Pete. You know, I haven't bathed since Thursday. <laughs> That's what he says to me. Well, we're sitting there like, well I just really. Really, dude? Because I meant to. I, really? And I'm driving over to your place and I'm like. And, you know, and then I start doing the math. I'm like, no, you skipped yesterday, you skipped today. Yeah, it'd been a, it'd been a few days. Uh, it'd been nearly a fortnight since <laughs> I last bathed. No, actually, a fortnight's two, two weeks. weeks, right? No, yeah. no, no. It had not been a fortnight. Not been a fortnight. Um, but it was special, Pete. It was, it was nice having you over. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I apologize for not bathing. <laughs> so listen, um, there actually, uh, we don't have a UFC tonight this week. I do have a tough talk. Um, this weekend, uh, Joanna Jan uh defending against uh, Jessica Penne. Uh, that's going to be a great scrap. That one is on Fight Pass. Um, 
you know, Jessica, it's, it's, it's a tough fight for her. Um, but Jessica, you know, when she lets her hands go, can really get a lot of stuff done, and she and she knows how to wrestle, and she's got submissions. Um, Joanna, though, uh, very aggressive. That's going to be a fun fight. I don't, I, I, I'm going to, I, it's going to be interesting to see what happens when you let your hands go against Johanna. I mean, that's, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm gonna. I'm picking you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, she's 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 a tough champ. And you know the fights over in Germany. Uh, Joanna will be much more of sort of a hometown girl right. uh, coming from Poland over to Germany. But Jessica, you know, she was uh, at the studio the other day. She's just a cool girl, and you know, really looking forward to it. And um, you know, we were joking about how well you know there's worse things you can do than travel the world like uh, with somebody right, paying right, for you to right. go and you know do what you love to well, do and may, um, may, uh, maybe travel the world without getting there. <laughs> shit kicked out of you. Yeah, that's you know, true I too. Um, I didn't throw that be nice. Yeah, but you know, she was saying it was really difficult after um, the Ultimate Fighter and after you know um, having another fight. You know, the, the motivation was pretty low for 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 a lot of the women um, after that show in their training. They were really fried. Right. Um, so you know, even though she was victorious in her last you know fight, and she just you know wasn't really feeling like oh that was her best anyway. So I feel like we're going to see a better Jessica even than we've already seen because she's yeah. kind of more reinvigorated, having a little more time, and obviously a title fight is up. Big deal. Still, just just imagine them on a crowded subway fighting. Oh, these two? Yeah. Oh yeah. man, that'd be uh, awesome. Just, it'd be great. <laughs> great. <laughs> Awesome. So, uh, so there's that. So, um, and then otherwise. So yeah, we'll, we'll be back for another podcast. This is kind of a, a, a little bit of a slower week. Um, yeah, we can. You know, but there's stuff going I'm, on. I'm looking forward to that. Oh uh, no, I, I am too. I'm saying for me personally, I don't have event. to to go into uh, to work as right. much over at the. Oh, that's right. Uh, I forget. You're forgetting. The highlight of this week is Kimbo and. Uh, oh, is that on this Friday? Is this Friday? Oh, oh. no, I forgot. Hello. That's Friday? Oh, yeah. Oh. Kimbo Slice and, and Ken. Ken, I forgot. That was this Friday. Oh, it's God. Friday. Do yourself a favor. That's right. You know, I was I worked those CBS fights um, uh, when they were supposed to fight initially the first time. And um, we were literally in our rehearsals, uh, you know, beforehand. And all of a sudden they call a meeting. And we're like, we never have a meeting at this point. And they come back and they're like, yeah, the fight's off. Uh, Ken's cut. We're like, what? We just saw him an hour and a half ago in the lobby of the hotel. So that was... um, Dubious? Good word. Um... Anyway, we all know what happened that night. Seth Petrozelli, uh, uh, the, the the punch heard around the world there, knocking out Kimbo's Slice. Kimbo was a good guy, uh, not a bad guy at all. Um, uh, I'm looking actually forward to kind of seeing him do his thing. How it, long has it been since he's fought? Uh, a long. Well, he's been boxing. It actually hasn't been that long since he's fought. Um, How many fights has he had since his oh, loss? Oh gosh. Oh, since that Petrozelli fight. Right. Oh, I don't, I'm not sure off the top of my head. I'd have to look that up because he, he did go and do boxing more than just MMA. Right. 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 Um, but the interesting thing is, if you guys want to hear some comedy, uh, listen to, we had their conference call before, uh, they had a conference call last week, uh, Kimbo and Ken, um, you know, and they're on, uh, uh, at the beginning of the call, Ken was kind of on more, and at the beginning of the call, they talk about, oh, you know, the guys have been tested, and, you know, whatever, and if you've seen pictures of Ken lately, he's looking pretty shredded for a 52-year-old dude. Is he 52? Yeah, I think he's 52. Um, anyway, it's 52, I think. 52. I think he's 52. Um, anyway, 51. 51, my bad. Sorry, Ken. Um, who actually, to be honest with you, has always been cool with me. Right. Like, when we've done it, I, I don't have a problem with him. Um, but, uh, you know, at the end of the, inter, uh, at the end of the later in the call, somebody asked Kimbo again. They revisited the question of PEDs and things like that. And Kimbo starts to say, oh, well, you know. You fans like to see a certain kind of a fight, and you know I don't really care what the other guy is doing, and you know we just show up, and and he starts to kind of basically say whatever you need to do to get there right, right, is right. cool with me, and the line suspiciously goes dead <laughs> on the call as his lawyer reaches over, and the call just <laughs> kind of ends there. So check it out. Uh, it's on our it's on the MMA Heat page, uh, uh, YouTube four slash MMA Heat. You can hear that call. It's worth a listen. I think anytime you say, I don't really care what the other guy does, that's pretty much. Let's wrap it up. Why don't we just not throw <laughs> stones at anybody here? Right. Why don't we right. just. Right. That being said, uh, I'm totally watching that. I can't believe I forgot that that was this weekend. Oh my God. I'm all over that. 51. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. incredible. Yeah. No, it, it'll be for as long as it lasts. It's going to be entertaining. Right. Do you know what I mean? And it's a long time come. I have to say that was one of the craziest things uh, down in Florida when that whole thing it took place. Like, wait a minute, what? What do you mean Ken's not fighting? Like that was just crazy. Right, right, and he right. really blew a huge opportunity. We were on CBS. 
Um, it was a, a really big deal, a really huge missed opportunity. Uh, that would have set up other opportunities for for Ken um, that that he just uh, you know sometimes cuts his nose off despite his face right, uh, right. you know and makes a, a decision I think emotionally and and maybe doesn't always think things out because he should have really thought then uh, it would have been much better for him but whatever so what's it on what's the uh... oh that's on Spike. Yeah, that'll be on Spike. Probably, I think they start usually like five o'clock West Coast time. Uh, uh, so be yeah, that'll time. be awesome. That'll be awesome. Um, all right, cool. Also, if you guys need techniques, go to www.mma.help um, for uh, advice on takedowns, uh, stand-up reversals. We got all kinds of stuff there. So uh, Hall of Famer Frank Trigg there and uh, Vladimir Matyshenko in this uh, in this picture here. But we've got other guys, so it's good stuff. Yeah. Okay. Pete, where can people find you? My noogie. Yeah. My noogie. When's the last time you tweeted? Uh, it's been a while, Karen. It's been a while. I'm not going to lie. Pete, do you know how social media works? Social media, I think you set up an account and then you just watch as people start following you, right? <laughs> social media, and then. and then Have you seen Field of Dreams? And then once you get to like a million, then you just say, like, hey, I'm starting a tequila company. Right. Check it out, and then everyone buys your tequila, and right. then you start a clothing company, and then I was going to start a rap label. Is that cool? Totally right. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah, there's the thing, though. Let's see here. We you got to tweet a um, little bit. Look at that. Oh, the, the I'm a great retweeter. Great I'm a great retweeter. You're a oh, lazy ow, tweeter. Oh, ah, whoa, look lazy. at that retweeter, though. My lazy. Re hey, all Dude, right. April, April 25th. Wow, that, okay, okay. Okay, here's the thing. Here's what I want to promise everybody. Three tweets this week. Three That's tweets. it? That's it? Dude, I'm just learning to walk now. Okay. You know. Oh, wait. Let me and do it a social you, media one. Can, How when, you, uh, when you do things like that, it hurts me. It, it's, you're sort of... Why don't you talk about it on social media then, Pete? <laughs> you have a lot to... I don't... I, I guess I don't understand because you always have witty, you know, uh, 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 comments and, and, and asides and this and that. Share them with the world, Pete. Let them go. Let, Let them go. go. Three tweets this week. Three tweets. Wow. For the next week. Stay I'm tuned. Keep... <laughs> you should you know, be three you know, a day at least. They don't like, charge you a search. It's <laughs> not a charge, right? <laughs> you, they're, they're free. Pete. You're right. You're right. You're Tweeting right. Listen. Free. Listen. For Let all my 160 like followers Let out there. Let the tweets go. Maybe they gave up on you. Maybe they thought you were dead. No, no. I have some loyal 160 followers. I, I, I think like the first 50 I paid for. I, I think the first 50, like I can't even like re 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 read the names. Just like. I tweet early and often at Karen Bryant, K A R Y N B R Y A N T. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at KB Heat. You can find uh, MMA Heat on Facebook and also on YouTube. You can also find uh, Karen Bryant for, uh, on YouTube, forward slash Karen Bryant. There lots of stuff there. Uh, like I said, I've got a tough talk this week, um, and I already know who's coming in. Uh, this will this will be a good one. Um, that is on Wednesday. Ask <coughs> her. Karen, can you sign my yearbook too? <laughs> listen, wow. listen. I'm listen. For listening I'm like name. the cool, aloof guy. Like, yeah, whatever. You want to follow me? Yeah, baby. Maybe I'll send you a tweet. Who knows? Cool. I said I'd guy. give you. <laughs> Your does that not cool work on so aloof guy? <laughs> does that not work on social media? Okay. Listen, babe. I said I could give you a tweet if I had the time this week. <laughs> Lights are off. It's time to go home, folks. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. You can find the audio version of this on MMAheat.com forward slash podcast. We have links to iTunes and Stitcher there. We will see you next time. <laughs>